Hey guys, what is up? It's Sauce and Wes, and welcome back to a new series on the channel where if you enjoy the video, you smash like, and if you don't, do it anyway. So, subscribe and drop quality in the comment section for more content. So, for today's video, I have a fan favorite life story that I've been saving for a very long time, alright? A very long time. This is this is high quality gold tier story time right here. So sit back and friggin' get a load of this shit. So many of my friends and I refer to this story, this very story, as the ghillie suit story, alright? The ghillie suit story. A legendary story that took place two years ago from today. July 25th, 2017. Sauce and Wes was always bullying with his homies. We called ourselves sauced, alright? S-A-U-C-E-D, sauce. That was our, that was our shit, you know. We'd put it up in our Instagram bios. It would be in our usernames, you know. It was our call sign back in the day. It was the squad, all right? The squad. And I remember back in the day, OG sauce consisted of me and my other two homies. What's up, Lee? And my friend, Leo, that unfortunately passed away earlier in 2017, back in January. So then, sauce evolved. There was about... 13, 14 of us, shit, I don't even know. It was, it was lit. It was awesome. It was a great time. It was a highlight of 2017 for sure. So anyway, it was July 25th, 2017 where we had a sauced get together, right? And call back to my, uh, we found an illegal dogfighting arena life story up on my channel. It was actually at the same house that we all went up to after we ended up you know, doing, doing all that, uh, hit the link down below, and I remember back in 2017, I just started driving around, I had my permit, right, so I, I wasn't able to actually get out of the house without, like, still getting a ride from one of my homies, right, so we all came up with this get-together over the sauce group chat, I ended up getting a ride from one of my homies, and we started a party, man, it was a party, it was lit, I remember we were all swimming in this big-ass pool in his backyard, we were playing fetch with the dog, it was, it was legendary, man, and we were playing guitar, we were just bowling it out. And then eventually nighttime arrived and we all got kind of tired of swimming. And eventually we were all just sitting around at the tables just trying to figure out something something to do, right? We're we're getting kind of bored. And I remember someone spoke up and was like, yo, let's go ding dong ditching tonight. It's gonna be lit. And of course, you know, we were all just a bunch of juniors, seniors in high school, being being the jabronis we were, we were like, yo, that sounds awesome let's do it and we were all just talking about it right talking about how we're gonna play in this like ding dong ditch set right and then someone says something about a ghillie suit okay someone someone speaks up and this is where this is where the ghillie suit gets introduced to the story and then another person said something like well who's gonna wear it and i, was, I, I spoke up i was like i'll wear it dude ding dong ditching in a ghillie suit is genius i mean they will not find me, you know? I'm completely hidden. I can literally just lay in their lawn, watch them walk out, call the cops, do whatever, and I would be out of plain sight. They would not know I'm here. So I end up trying on this ghillie suit, right? And it's kind of it's kind of heavy, right? It's, it's a little heavy. So I end up emptying it out my pockets. I remember I set my, uh, set my phone on charge because it was dead at the time. So I plugged it into the wall, which was my first mistake of this life story, all right? Because little did I know, I'm gonna be needing my phone later that night. But I wasn't really stressing about it. So we all head out, right? We're on this amazing quest. We all, we all just walking in the middle of the street. We feel like badasses, right? It's about 10 o'clock at night. We're out here late night bowling with the boys and i remember we end up getting to the edge of his neighborhood and going through this big field jumping fences crossing through this like forested area and we get to this golf course right and this is where our inner jabroni decided to come out so you know the sandy areas in a golf course right like the ones where there'll be like a bench next to it and there's there just be like a big a big random sand pit right well, our jaboni asses decided to draw swastikas and literally flip over the whole porta potty that was right next to it. Yeah, just just basically doing jabroni shit, right? We all had a rather dark sense of humor back in the day. So in order to get to this neighborhood, we had to cross through that golf course where we completely raised hell in, and we end up getting to this other neighborhood that was across from the golf course, right? Like it was 
was kind of parallel from it. We ended up crossing through the trees, jumping over this river, and boom, we're in a new neighborhood, all right? And this was the neighborhood where we decided to go ding dong ditching. So we all kind of set up across the street, right? And everyone's hiding behind this big white storage container, all just kind of facing toward this house, and all eyes are on this house, right? So me and a friend of mine ended up running up to the house. He was like, yo, man, let me let me get the doorbell on this one. I was like, all right, man, go for it. So I end up hiding in the I end up hiding in the bushes next to his house, just in front of the house, you know. He ends up ringing the doorbell. Nothing happens. He runs up again, rings it again. Nothing happens. So that first house, it was it was kind of lame, you know. We, we rang the doorbell. We didn't get any reactions out of anyone. It was only like 11 o'clock at night. You know, surely people are still up. But little did we know, this neighborhood was full of old people, right? Like, old, old ass people, aka snitches, snitches, boy, let me tell ya. And I could just imagine what they're, what they were thinking, they're like, ah, oh, these jabronis, you know, ringing their doorbells, at least that's, that's what I, that's what I thought at the time, you know, they, they didn't really give a shit, you know, it happens to people all the time, whatever, but it turns out that wasn't really the case. So about 10 minutes go by after we rang this doorbell, right, and we're all just kind of walking down the street, and then all of a sudden this, this car pulls up, right? And his headlights are off, so I see it, and I instantly think, you know what, sketch, we need to go, right? So six of us ended up staying with the group on the road, and then six of us dipped. And I was one of the guys that dipped, because, you know, I was wearing a big ghillie suit, it looked kind of sketchy at the time. The six of us that dipped, we all just kind of laid on the side, like, we kind of laid away from the road, and we got down into this dark area, in between some houses, there was like a big tree, I remember there was trees, there was this big white storage container, and we were all just kind of watching what happens, you know, like, cause we weren't really trying to get caught, you know, like ding dong ditching, we were out here doing stuff we shouldn't have been doing at the wrong time of night, and I was not about to pay for it. And I remember before we all split up, a friend of mine that stayed with the group on the road was like, yo guys, what are y'all doing, come back, it's, it's nothing, it's just a car, why are you guys freaking out, and I was like, it's a car without headlights. You guys need to go right now. We need to go, you know? And they were like, no, 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 it's fine. Like, literally, it's fine. And I was like, all right, whatever, whatever, I'm out of here. So the six of us ended up splitting from the group and laying back in the grass. We weren't actually about to leave them out there, you know? We, we kind of sat back and we were watching it go down. So this car that had its headlights off ended up pulling over to the side of the road. He started talking to the six of my friends that stayed next to the road and didn't run. He ended up pulling out a badge and saying he was an off-duty police officer. And I didn't really know what was going down at the time. Like, I was far enough back to where I could only hear, like, murmurs of the conversation. Like, I couldn't hear, like, specific words, only if they were, like, spoken really loudly. But as soon as I realized that no one was coming back, I knew something was wrong. So I ended up kind of crawling backward, and I got over one of my friends, and I was kind of, like, protecting him. He was kind of, like, in the light, and I was in a ghillie suit, so I was... I was like giving him a little bit of extra camouflage and I remember my friend Lee was closest to the road and he was sitting there like kind of whispering back at us. He was like, yo, we can't leave them. What are you guys doing? We can't leave them. He was being a real one for sure. And I was like, dude, dude, they're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. We just need to chill. Okay. We just need to chill. And then he was like, no, man, I'm, I'm going up there. I'm going to see what's going on and I'm going to figure everything out. All right. And literally before he could even move this bright flashlight ends up coming out from like behind this white container that lee was behind and all i see is a silhouette of lee standing there in the, in like this flashlight he looks like a deer in headlights right now and this officer ends up yelling something he's like wes really loud he yells my name he goes wes and then sees lee grabs his arm and flings him all the way back onto the ground like it was crazy i could literally i literally watched it in slow motion it was insane so as soon as that happened we all scattered we all got up and scattered all right like it was like all hell broke loose so everyone ended up running uh the guy that the people on the road obviously stayed there at this time there's like actual on-duty cops at the scene and like when i say scattered i literally mean we scattered i was by myself in the ghillie suit and everyone else just started running i don't know whether they ran back to the house they ran i remember some people climbed up in trees it was it was insane and i had no knowledge of where anyone went at the time i had no cell phone on me no flashlight no nothing it was pitch dark and all I remember is running, 
running fast back into this field, okay? And then that's whenever I remember, I'm like, oh shit, I'm in a ghillie suit right now. So as I'm running, I see this tower and there's like a river that's running underneath the tower. It isn't really a river, it's more of like a creek, okay? And I end up getting into this creek. I do a really cool parkour slide into this creek and I turn around and I'm kind of looking back on the crime scene now, right? And all I see is flashlights looking into the into this field. They're shining everywhere. They're shining. Most of them are shining on the ground though, right? And like along the tree line. And I remember thinking to myself and I'm like, yo, this is actually happening. And I just had pure adrenaline pumping through my body, right? And then that's whenever I started to think, I was like, yo, why, why did he call my name? How did he know I was out here? Well, let me tell you, apparently at the crime scene, whenever this cop was questioning everyone, before I ended up dipping from the group, before Lee ended up getting snatched by the cops, a friend of mine ended up speaking up for the group, okay? It's a good thing that he did this. Let me get that straight. It's a very good thing that he did this. He said, we have a friend out there. His name's Wes, and he's in a ghillie suit. And he had to say that to the cops so that way they know that there's only one more person out there and that there wasn't an actual, like, another whole half of the group that was able to escape. So, instead of having a bunch of cops looking for a group of people, it was a bunch of cops looking for one person in a ghillie suit. And I remember speaking with one of my friends after all this blew over, and he told me that the cop asked what the ghillie suit looked like, and he just looked at him, and then pointed at the ground, so here I am knee deep in this water in this creek, right? And I'm sitting here and I see I see the flashlights start going around. I hear the walkie talkies going off and then it clicks. I'm like, yo, I better get out of here because they will eventually make their way here. Shit, they might call in a fucking chopper. Oh my God. But I basically started assuming the worst and I got out of there. So basically I ran across this field and went into this other neighborhood, all right? And at the time I assumed that it was my friend's neighborhood. It was it was the neighborhood with the house that we had the big party at and where where we were all meeting up back up at, you know. So here I am walking all the way through this neighborhood. It's about 12:30 midnight by now and I finally make it to the address. I make it to the house number and it turns out not to be his house. So here I am, stuck, lost in this neighborhood, don't know where I am, I don't have my cell phone on me, I'm holding a ghillie suit, I took, I ended up taking the ghillie suit off, that way I looked less sketchy, but it's already about 1 o'clock by the time I had ended up reaching to what I thought had been his house, and I don't, I don't know what else to do, I've hit rock bottom, alright, the police are searching for me, choppers are inbound, Oh my god, you know, I, I didn't know what else to do, so I did the last thing anyone would ever do when they're lost. And that was to try asking for directions at 1am on a weekday. So I remember I spent another 20 minutes walking all the way back up this road, back toward the crime scene, and I knock on the first house, and no one answered. No one, no one was there, no TVs were on, I'd assumed everyone was already asleep by then. I had literally tried waving to cars, like, that would pass by, trying to ask for a ride or whatever, but no, their jabroni asses decided to just keep driving. I mean, I mean, honestly, I probably would too, but, you know, hey, I, I, Anyway, I walk up to this next house, alright, and this is, I will never, ever forget this house. I remember there were doorsteps, had big column doors, it had a big door, and there was a doorbell, and it had a little camera on it, alright, we'll, we'll get back to the camera later on in the video. But anyway, before I knock on the door, I can see, like, through the window that their TV's on, so they, they can't be asleep, they have to be up at least. So, I go to knock on this door, and immediately, as I assume, literally almost before I start knocking on the door, these dogs start barking so loud throughout the house. There's probably about four or five dogs in this house, alright? And here's the part where I introduce another, yeah, you guessed it scumbags the channel so this guy walks up to the door right he's got to be in his mid 60s probably maybe 70s i don't know he was a he was a pretty old grown folk right? and he walks up to the door he looks at me through the window and looks at my ghillie suit and then he pushes a button next to the doorknob and starts talking to me through the door right like he doesn't open the door he doesn't give me a warm welcome or anything he just pushes this button 
and talks to me. He goes, what the hell are you doing out here so late, kid? Or some shit along the lines of that. And I reply, I'm like, yo, hey, um, I'm kind of lost. Me and my friends, we were, I had to, I had to kind of bullshit up an excuse to try to get directions back home, right? I told him we were playing uh, airsoft in the golf course, right? That's why I explained why I had the ghillie suit and I ended up getting separated and that I needed directions back home. And then I asked, I was like, hey man, you think you think you can give me some directions back home? Uh, I'm trying to find my way back to so-and-so address. I ended up telling him the address and the street name and he just looked at me and he goes, do your parents know you're out this late? And I was like, uh, yeah. And this scumbag just starts going on and on and on. Like it just, <sighs> all right, here's... Here's one of the things he asked me, all right? He tried asking me for my parents' phone number, and I wasn't about to give it to him, so I was like, no, nah, I don't know my parents' phone number, but if you were to just give me directions back to the street my friend lives on so that way I can get back to his house, that would be much appreciated, you know? And then I'll be on my way. You won't have to worry about me for anymore, all right? And then his eyes just get so wide, and he's like, you don't know your own parents phone number and i kind of bullshitted another excuse i was like no they they got new cell phones i'm sorry you can can i please get directions back that's all i want and then he tried saying oh well maybe maybe the sheriff can take maybe the city sheriff can take you back to where you're going and i was just like that won't be necessary and then he tried asking me for my age and i was like i'm 17 you know i kind of told him the truth it was a bad move on me i should have told him i was 18. actually yeah i would have been about 16 at the time so i think i told him i was 17. and then i don't know what it was that set this old man off okay but after i told him that i was 17 years old he grabs his shotgun all right he looks to his left he grabs a fucking shotgun aims it right at me and he says i am calling the cops you have 10 seconds to get the hell off of my property and like as soon as he grabbed that shotgun my heart sank i put my hands up i started backing away i was like listen man i'm gone i was never here i'm sorry to bother you have a good night and i left i fucking left so it's about 2 2 30 a.m now all hope is lost i began to make my way back to the crime scene right so i finally get there and i can hear walkie talkies off in the distance i can just hear the chattering right in like the next tree line over or whatever and it's very sketchy i feel like i'm in a mission for modern warfare you know and then out of the corner of my eye i see i actually end up seeing a flashlight right but it's not it's not like a normal flashlight this this flashlight you it showed like the ground in front of it you know what like an iphone light or like a samsung a phone light looks like that's what it was and it turned out to actually be my friends coming back to look for me at the most perfect timing i swear it was such a perfect timing if they would have came any sooner or any later i would not have been there it was insane so i end up running over there i kind of give them a whistle they see me they start running back toward me and we just embrace right we just we just fucking embrace and he's like yo i'm so glad you're okay everyone has their own version of the story we need to get back to the house right now so i finally end up getting back to the house with my two other friends that went out looking for me and everyone is gone there is literally just five people left that's all that was left the damage was dealt parents were called hearts were broken and spirits were let down but apparently the cops never ended up arresting anyone they just had everyone call their parents off their cell phones or the cops cell phone and had them pick them up from the crime scene so me being that jabroni with the strict parents and stuff back in the day i'm very glad that i had a ghillie suit on that day and you think the story would stop there but oh no oh no remember that remember that scumbag and the uh the camera on the doorbell from from earlier in the video well we're, we're getting back to that right now so it's the next day right we all end up going home and i have work at noon so i end up clocking into mcdonald's i was working at mcdonald's at the time i was doing drive-through taking orders or whatever 
and I get a text on my phone from my friend and he sends me this picture I'll just let you guys look at it yeah that's me on this scumbags doorstep holding a ghillie suit begging for directions back apparently he had ended up remembering the exact address that I told him that night the exact address that he said what he wasn't familiar with whatsoever didn't know how to get there turns out he's really familiar with it because he knows my friend's dad that lives there he has been there before he's been on that street before and he was just a massive scumbag for not telling me how to get there my friend ended up sending me screenshots of this scumbag and my friend's dad texting each other and he came up with some bullshit saying that everyone was on this back doorstep with airsoft guns trying to get him out of the house to shoot him so i guess the lesson of today's story and the ghillie suit story overall is to make sure you have your cell phone on you whenever you run from the cops in a ghillie suit most definitely so i hope you guys enjoyed the video sorry it was such a long video um God, it was just so crazy. Everything that happened that night from the ghillie suit, dodge, dodging the cops in a ghillie suit, getting a shotgun pulled out on me, having the scumbag actually end up texting my friend's father. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's honestly a mouthful. But leave a like, comment if you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe to my Instagram at Sauce and Wes. Also, follow me on Twitter at Sauce Wes while you're at it. Be super cool. And, um, yeah. As much as I'd like to keep this video going, I think you guys have heard enough of my jabroni ass talk. But hey, if you haven't, check out my other life stories in the links below. And lastly, have a nice day today. You deserve it. Peace.